episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about Alien Invasion by Tim Levin. This is book two of The Rage War. It's from Titan Books, and it follows book one, coincidentally, uh, which is Predator Incursion. Uh, so there's going to be a little bit of spoiler talk for the first book as I talk about this book. Uh, so you should go back and read that first before you watch this review, and I'll give you some time to do that. So go ahead and go read Predator Incursion. I'll be here. Pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. Wait, wait, I can't do this. I love you. No, it's wrong. Our families are at war, but I love you too. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, okay, so you're finished reading the first book, all right. Now we can talk about book two, Alien Invasion. All right, so uh, book two starts right where the first book left off. Or uh, there are quite a few main characters, so there are sort of a few endings to the first book. Uh, and this takes place immediately following one of those endings, if that makes sense. We start with Johnny Mains. Uh, Johnny is a colonial marine. His uh, group is called the Void Larks. And uh, in the first book, with the, uh, well, incursion of the predators into the human sphere, uh, Johnny and his, his Void Larks were monitoring a predator habitat, and they ended up uh, having to crash land on that habitat and survive. And it was overrun by xenomorphs. And when we left them at the end of the book, just Johnny and one more of his Marines uh, were alive. And it looked like they weren't going to be alive for long. Uh, there was an android leading these xenomorphs and just they're coming after Johnny. Um, and, and so that's where this book picks up. We've got Johnny and his teammates uh, trapped by the xenomorphs. And then, I guess this is a bit of a spoiler, but it's the first chapter, so they're saved. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Um, so, we start with this big action sequence, which is really wild. And then it, it moves on to everything else that's going on. Um, <clears throat> Now, I said in my review of the first book, and I'll have a link for that up here somewhere. Um, I said in that review that uh, Predator Incursion was very science fiction. Um, and what I meant by that is the Predator movies, yes, they're obviously science fiction since you, you have this alien being that people are fighting. But... You know, the first Predator movie takes place in the jungle on Earth. The second Predator movie takes place in Los Angeles, right? I try to forget that movie. Um, so while you have the, the science fiction element of this creature with its advanced weapons fighting humans, it, it's, it's not a sweeping science fiction story. And the same can be said a bit for the Alien movies. Again, obviously science fiction with the spaceships and androids and everything else that's going on and their own alien creatures but they're still very uh, the first one incredibly isolated for the most part all taking place on this tiny ship uh the second one not quite as isolated but still a pretty isolated movie um they all have that these books uh predator incursion alien invasion are sweeping they encompass not just the entire human sphere but beyond so that's one of the things i like about these you may lose that sort of claustrophobic feel that you get from the alien movies although there are bits of that in there because there are character pieces amongst the scope of the story um so you, so you might lose a bit of that claustrophobia but it's still, it's this amazing, sweeping, grand, epic story. Um, so in the first book, the Predators are encroaching uh, on the human sphere. And we realize that they're running from something. 
and that something is the rage. Uh, so this is, we're again, in sort of spoilers for the first book. The rage is a group of humans that left Earth centuries ago, just had gone out to explore, just to, to see how far they could go. Uh, but something happened. They discovered something. They've been sort of, they've been twisted. And now they're on their way back to take control of the human sphere. And they've found a way to weaponize xenomorphs. Um, and so this book is where, well, the invasion makes sense. Man, it all ties together with the titles and everything. The invasion really kicks into gear. And I was just sort of dumbfounded by uh, a number here. Uh, I sh should have jotted this down in my notes instead of trying to look it up. Uh, but here it is. Okay, so one of the android generals says uh, he has more than 2,000 xenomorphs ready to go and 10 times that many in reserve. Those are staggering numbers. And the way that the, the, the Rage and their android generals use the xenomorphs to attack is just insane. Uh, so you have basically the Rage, their ships coming in, and they're trying to take over, at this point, drop holes, which are the means by which travel of great distances is achieved in a short amount of time. So... Uh, the Rage takes over the drop holes, gets them that much closer to the center of the human sphere where they can just take over everything. Um, but, man, yeah, the way they use the Xenomorphs as weapons is just crazy. Uh, so, anyway, it's my door slamming. You may hear some ambient noise. I have the window open and the fan going because it's just too hot. Normally, I'd shut all that stuff down. Um, but it's just too damn hot, so the wind just slammed the door. Or it could be a ghost. I don't know. I'm not a scientist or a paranormalologist. Anyway, back to the book. So, uh, Johnny Maines. Uh, he survives. And he and the group of colonial marines that have rescued him, are they, they send a message back to the human sphere. Uh, they're trying to get back to the human sphere because they know that something crazy is going on. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. You have Isa Palant, who has, in the first book, she had figured out a way to communicate with the Predators. Uh, we have a ceasefire. Humans have a ceasefire with the Predators, and they're not necessarily working together, but the Predators are kind of watching over what's going on, and they will step in on occasion. Uh, but Isa Palant is trying to get back to uh, Wayland Utani um, because they figure she she knows the predators and maybe she'll be able to maybe she has some knowledge uh, and she's with another group of colonial marines and they've been tasked these colonial marines have been tasked with not just getting Isopalant back to the human sphere but uh, once we kind of get an idea of what's going on or the humans do they want these colonial marines to procure one of the android generals that are controlling this xenomorph army. Uh, you have L Lilia, Lilia, again, another character from the first book. Uh, she's an android. She was part of the rage, but uh, basically rebelled, went on the run, and she has information that could help the humans. So she's trying to get back. Everyone's just sort of a race towards the center of the human sphere. Um, she's trying to get back, and she's hooked up with a predator. Uh, but she wants to get back with the information that she has. Uh, and we meet some new characters along the way. Uh, there's all sorts of craziness, some wild battles. We learn more about the rage and what it is they want. Um, and how they've achieved the things that they have achieved, their ships uh, travel faster than uh, seems possible, uh, obviously. Weaponizing xenomorphs, just some wild things that they've done. We learn more about how they accomplished that. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
so I love this book. I loved the first one. I love this one. Uh, it's not your traditional alien story. As I said, it's just, it's got such huge scope. And I love that about that. It, it just opens everything up. And there are some crazy xenomorph battles. You do have these very open, wild xenomorph attacks where they're being used as weapons by the android generals. But then you do have some smaller on board a ship kind of things where you do get that claustrophobic feeling that the movies have given you. Um, and just, I, I <clears throat> excuse me, there's uh, space battles, which is not something we've seen in the Alien or Predator movies before. Uh, they had some in the first book. There's a few more in this book where we're talking about ships, uh, spaceships, not necessarily fighters. We're not talking about like TIE fighters and X-Wings going at it, dogfighting. But uh, more along the lines, I suppose, of, say, the Enterprise versus uh, a Klingon ship, if we're going original series. Um, or maybe somewhere in between those two. Maybe not necessarily as big as the Enterprise, but definitely not dogfighters like X-Wings. Um, but you do have these these outer space battles between spaceships, um, which, again, not something we've seen in the Alien or Predator movies. And I like that Tim Levin is moving this, this whole world forward. Um, as my, I love Alien and Aliens, and I don't, uh, I like Alien 3, I don't hate Alien 4. Um, not a big fan of the Alien vs. Predator movies, either one of them. Uh, I love Predator, I hate Predator 2, and full disclosure, I have not seen Predators. I want to, I hear it's great, it's just I've never gotten around to it. But, so all of that being said, um... I, so I love Alien and Aliens. I, the, the way they're made with the isolation uh, is, is amazing. Alien is a horror film. It's science fiction, but it's a horror film. But if authors, whomever is uh, continuing the Xenomorph story, if all they do is repeat that over and over again, it's going to get old. Um, and I don't know that it has been done. I have There are lots of alien novels out there, and I have not read all of them. I have read a few. I'm talking about the older stuff, the Steve Perry or S.D. Perry written stuff. Uh, I read a few, but it's been a long time. I don't remember them. Uh, I don't think I actually read any of the comics from uh, Dark Horse, I believe it was. I read some things like Superman vs. Alien. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, so I, so I can't speak to whether or not those, how, how big those stories go, if they keep those isolated or if they expand it. All I can talk about is what I know or think I know, some people might say, uh, and that's the movies very isolated. These books really have a massive scope, and I like that. Um, I don't want to see the same thing over and over again. No matter how well it works in the movie, just repeating it is pointless in my opinion. So I'm happy that Tim Levin has opened it up and I can't wait to see what happens. Um, <clears throat> we're left with a, a few cliffhangers again at the end of this book uh, with all our heroes, all our characters. Uh, you've got, uh, let's see. Well, Johnny and the people that he's with find, I think they're the ones that find one of, there's two main rage ships. You know what? I'm not going to go into it. You got to read the book for yourself. Um, just leave it at all of our characters are at tipping points, if you want to call it that. Uh, so I'm just can't wait for the next one to see what happens when we get to the all out war between the aliens and the predators. Uh, and with poor humans caught in the middle, as always. Um, so, anyway, all that rambling leads to my rating. Which, considering how I've been talking about this book, shouldn't surprise anyone. I give 
Alien Invasion by Tim Levin, The Rage War Book 2. I give it 5 out of 5. Wow, horrible lighting. 5 out of 5 xenomorph eggs. Poorly drawn xenomorph eggs, but there you go. Um, 5 out of 5. I really dug this. Once I got going, I didn't want to put it down. Just, it, it moves forward so quickly with so much going on. And I think it's a great story. So, there you have it. Alien Invasion, book two. Um, I want to say book three comes out in September. I'm not sure if that's even close to when it comes out. For some reason, that's what's in my head, though. Um, so, uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I will have, as I said, I'll have a link for my Predator Incursion review up here somewhere. I'll have a link to pick up this book in the description down below. Um, and I think that covers everything. So this has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. These have been the Alien vs. Predator players. And until next time, read more books.